everybody! It is time for Tutor Tip Tuesday. Welcome to those who are new. It has been a couple weeks since I posted a video. Been busy, been keeping up with tutoring, been keeping up with life in general. Y'all know how that goes. For today, we are going to delve quickly into the history of the English language, mainly um, how it applies to us today, quickly what it took to become today, and how that affects us. Now, with this, first you need to know that the English language, when it first became or started becoming what we have today, it was a lot of what is called borrowing. Yes, this is a technical term. Borrowing, when it comes to different languages, is when a language ultimately takes borrows from other languages to make or build upon their own language. So for instance, when it comes to the English language, centuries and centuries ago, we took, or in this case, borrowed from German languages, from Norse languages, French, Latin. We took or borrowed from several different countries. And don't think that this is, well, don't imagine that this is when we were just like, hmm, I like this word, I like this word. No, that's not what it was. Whenever England, in this case, um, United Kingdom, Britain, whatever you want to call it, was created or was being created, lots of different people from different countries came to conquer or migrated into this area and they brought their own language. And throughout the centuries, all these languages mixed together, and that's when the borrowing happened, when we all started creating, in a way, our own language, which is now called English. Now, this was centuries ago, and in the year between, or in the years between um, 1000 and 1100, we began creating our own grammar or syntax. And that was when we really started to become English. Now, back then, it was called Old English. Now, I'm not talking Shakespeare. Shakespeare was centuries later. Old English is what you wouldn't even be able to understand today. And then came um, early modern English. And early modern English is Shakespeare. And then, of course, modern English is what we have today. Now, with this, why am I teaching you about this? Why is this a quick video for this quick history of the English language? It is because I want a lot of you to understand that this is why the English language is so difficult to understand or why some words don't make sense with other words or why some grammar rules don't make sense with other grammar rules, or why some are, you gotta do this, and some are, well, you don't have to do this if you feel like it, or why some feel so old-fashioned. It is because we borrowed from a bunch of other languages, so they're all mixing together, trying to be the top rule, or, you know, not make sense with other words, but we also are adapting. If you look up Old English, it does not make sense to what we have today. Old English is like Beowulf kind of era. It does not make sense to what we speak today, but is where we came from and we are always adapting and evolving. And that is why some rules or some grammar rules or some spelling rules just don't make sense. So if something does not make sense to you in the English language, do not give up. It is a difficult language. Start thinking of what you can use as a coping, or not quite coping, but an understanding of those words, tricks and shortcuts that you can use to help you, help you remember what is what in the English language. So I hope this can help you understand English a little bit better and why it's kind of a crazy language when you think about it. I will post an image of a quick timeline of the English language and hopefully you guys can have a little more understanding today. So I will talk to you guys next week have a great, beautiful day. Hopefully, we can go on a walk today. <laughs> That'd be really nice. And hopefully, you guys can enjoy another beautiful day in this world. All right. 
Bye guys. Bye.